Welcome. Welcome to the Connection Zone session. And this is Len Live, and I'm welcoming you. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to Microsoft Ignite. I hope you've been learning a lot since yesterday. And my name is David Abu, Cloud Advocate at Microsoft. And we're welcoming my co-presenter, Leon. Leon, how are you? David, I'm fantastic. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you. Um, and I've enjoyed Ignite so far. It's been absolutely amazing and looking forward to this Learn Live. Yeah, I am also looking forward to this Learn Live. But how is London, UK? How is it? It's absolutely fantastic. I haven't seen much of London today um, because I've been too engrossed in all of the fantastic news that's been coming out of Ignite. Um, how about yourself over in Lagos? Yeah, over in Lagos, we're having one event we're planning, but right now I've just been focusing on Microsoft Ignite since yesterday. And it has been also different, different news um, from Power BI. And one of them is the cross sharing of data where you can just use somebody else's external data in your own tenants. That was cool. Like I saw it and I was like, wow. So what do you think? Have you heard of any news that was that overblown you kind of? Definitely. You took you took the words right out of my mouth. So cross tenant data set sharing um, has, has been absolutely amazing and welcome, uh, a welcomed enhancement, shall we say, to the ecosystem. But also the Azure analysis services to Power BI um, data set migration wizard. Absolutely mind blowing. That's going to be fantastic for so many organizations. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So if you're listening to us and you're watching us right now, what is one news? that you've heard about Power BI that you are excited about. Can you put it in the chat? I would love to hear. Um, so today, um, we're going to be talking about design Power BI report. And one of the things that we wanted to look at is what are the things that you, you love to understand when it comes to reporting um, in Power BI? But before I go, I want to show you um, our moderator. And I to our moderators, Adewale Yusuf, who works in Microsoft, um, who works in Lagos, Nigeria, also in Microsoft MVP. Thank you very much. Olari Wedju Oyimbo, okay, Senior Cloud Advocate at Microsoft. Thank you very much for supporting from the back end. Thank you. Um, Leon, do you want to take up um, what we have for today majorly? Yeah, definitely. So we're going to take a look at design Power BI reports in this Learn Live. We're going to take a look at some best practice and we're going to see how you can utilize over 30 core visualizations within Power BI um, and how beginners can start to understand how to get how to get the correct visual within their reports. Um, David, what I always find is that by selecting the right visual for the type of data type I'm trying to express and also the message I'm, I'm trying to get across, it bodes well for me. With that being said, can you go into some of the learning objectives for today's session? Yeah. So one thing about what we're trying to do is to learn three major things. And um, the first thing is to talk about learn about the structure of Power BI reports. Now, one thing is that every report has a structure. So what are the things that we needed to look out for when creating this Power BI report? Secondly, is to talk about the report, um, the report object. What are report objects within Power BI? How can we use them? How do we work around them? And this is something that we're going to be working on when um, we're going to be talking about when, um, when this session is ongoing. And the third is how do we select the right type of visual? How do we select the right type of visual? And that is something that a lot of people ask every time. How do I know when to use this visual or when not to use this visual? And that is something that we will learn together as we go on in this session. And also, you can also follow us. Use the link below to follow us um, as we do this. So, um, Leon, can we go through? the introduction. Yes, please. So with that being said, you need to understand that you can use either Power BI desktop or Power BI service, so the web portal, to actually design your Microsoft Power BI reports. It's worthwhile noting that um, Microsoft Power BI desktop is only available on Windows as an operating system. Um, but as a design tool, it also supports the development of reports and data models. So within this next module, we're going to focus on report design. Um, David, over to you. Okay, so let's talk about report structure. And one thing is that 
Power BI report connects to a single data set, and that is the data model. And it has at least one report page. You can have multiple. And however, it is common that reports have multiple pages. On each page, report objects are laid out. Report objects include the visuals and element. And one thing that we talk about is that for visuals, you're talking about the visualization of the data set itself. So when you get a data set, you need to visualize it. You're using the bar chart, you're using the composition tree. Anyone that you're using, you're trying to just visualize. The next thing is that you're looking at the element. Now, in structure, you need to understand elements. What are elements? You're looking at the text box, the buttons, the shape, and the images. Now, all this helps you using the visuals together with it. So now we want to talk about the report pages itself. And I'll hand over to Leon. Leon, what do you think about report pages? So I think report pages can be used in a plethora of ways, but the best way to understand them um, is if you come from a Microsoft Excel background, they're very similar to worksheets in the fact that you can add, rename, even resequence and hide and duplicate or even delete Power BI report pages. Now, I'll give a quick tip in the fact that duplicating pages can enhance your workflow. Um, so what I tend to do, especially on client engagements where I have multiple report pages, is I will lay out my design and structure for a report page, including elements like the logo, uh, filters, etc. And I can then use the duplicate function to um, publish more of those pages in a uniform fashion, rather than having to go back and redo the work one by one. It's also worthwhile noting that report consumers are able to navigate to all visible pages just by selecting on the tab. Again, very similar to um, how worksheets would work from, a, from an Excel perspective. Um, so David, what are some of the ways that you've been able to utilize report pages within Power BI? So one thing about report pages is about the seamless process where you need to change or um, improve on the things that you do. Something like Slicer. I love using slicers because you can actually filter anything that you want to filter across all pages. And that way it's just easy and it's seamless. So when you're looking at a different category or, or time, so you wanted to get some report between this time and this time. And within that period of time, you want all your report pages to actually work the same way. And that is just to show you the same value or the same insight that you want to see. And that is something I love about yes. report pages and their seamless process. Excellent. I couldn't agree more. And it would be great to hear from some of our um, listeners and participants today in terms of how they've been able to utilize report pages and the, the accessibility and the ease of it as well. Yeah, please put it in the chat. What do you see? How do you use report pages? Let's, let's, let's hear what, what you have to say. Thank you very much. So we are going to move over to um, report objects. Now, one thing about report objects is that these are the ways in which you want to enhance a visual or an element. So when you look at the format brush, the format option helps you to change so many things. And when you're changing so many things, is that you're changing the size, you're, you want to change the background, the title, the border, the shadow, data labels, and those other things. And that way, when you do that, it improves either your visuals or your element. So for me right now, I love data labels. Because for me, I just love the numbers. I just love to see numbers. And that way, it's just easy for me to be able to, vis um, to, be able to interpret visuals. Um, Leon, what, which side of the report, um, the report objects that you like more? Um, for me, it's not really a side. So I like the search functionality uh, within, within, within report objects. This allows me to be able to quickly identify um, where areas of the um, areas of the, of the navigation I want to get to very quickly. So for me, that search, but that search bar is, is my go to definitely. Great, 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 great. So let's move over to one of the exciting parts of this session. And we want to talk about visuals. A lot of time, a lot of people ask that, oh, which visual should I use? And we have so many visuals within Power BI. So how do you interpret based on the insights that you're looking for? How do you use the best visual to interpret it? And we'll move over um, to Leon. Leon should help us open that floor. Leon, over to you. 
Thank you very much, David. So um, visuals are basically vis visualizations of data set data. Now, Power BI, as I mentioned at the top end of the show, actually includes over 30 core visuals, uh, which are built in and available to all reports. You can access the core visuals in the first section of the visualization pane also. Um, again, another pro tip is to learn what a visual icon in the field pane represents. You can just hover your cursor over it, and this will reveal the visual type in a tooltip. You can also extend uh, the core visuals with custom visualizations and custom visualizations can be sourced from the Microsoft app source um, and there you'll find um, a wide variety of custom visualizations which have been developed to further extend Power BI as well. Um, you can also then start to use the following general methodology um, to add and configure a visual. So just by selecting the type of visualization that you would like from the pane, you can drag and drop, you can optionally apply visual level filters as well. So in individually filter each visualization um, and th th there's more more enhancements available to us from this perspective as well David I'd love to hear from you in terms of which one is your favorite or go-to visualization type so either I'm trying to debug or I'm trying to see things that I don't know that they are in the data I love the Q&A the Q&A just helped me go there and say okay I'm looking for this I'm looking for that and oh the top the top product by region, the top product by quantity, the top product by revenue. And the Q&A just helps me to do that. I love the Q&A visual very, very much. Um, and the second one is the decomposition tree. Those two, I love them. I just go there and just pick them and I just start to analyze. I can use the decomposition tree to analyze the full data set, like the full data set because of the AI capability within it. It's just so, so, so powerful. So for me right now, I love how the decomposition tree and also the AI visual helps me to analyze data sets in a very, very fast manner. So which one do you like, Leon? Oh, fantastic. So for me, I also enjoy using the, the decomposition tree, um, but I find myself always going to bar charts. OK, generally, when displaying categorical type of data, um, I always lean towards using a bar chart. So this is probably my go to visualization that I use the most often within Power BI. Um, again, it would be great to hear from the audience today in terms of if they have a favorite as well. And I'm sure this would be quite an interesting poll as well um, for the future. Yeah, a whole lot of people have, we love different visuals and we can't wait to see the numbers there. For, for us, we just love the AI side of Power BI. Yeah, and Batchat, Batchat is very, very old, but is one of the most powerful visuals within Power BI. And I, I, I agree, I agree to that, I agree. So I think let's move over to Element. Now, yes. one thing about Element is that it provides visual interest, but just, just not use the data set data and with some exception, but the four, we have four things that we are using the four type within the element space. And we, are, you, we have the text box, the button, the shape, and the image. Now, but let's go in, in, in details with each one of them. So the text box majorly add the rich text such as title uh, to the reports page. And you can just apply so many things to it. And remember, the format you can use format you can just pick anything that you want to pick to be able to increase or decrease and everything like that and the next thing that we're looking at is the button now a whole lot of people love the button because you can use that to move in and out within the power bi service or even within the power bi desktop where you need to click control and you're clicking your button to move so one beautiful thing is that it just helps to increase the interaction within your report. And we have the shapes. Shapes is a lot used in the decoration of it. And you want to use um, shapes to just design your report. You would love shapes because you can also format it. You can style it in many ways that you like. One of the most one I like, I love the most is image. Image is so important because it has some brand awareness side to it. So a whole lot of companies love to bring in their company logo to every page within their report. And you want to use that. And it includes either the BPM, the JPEG, the GIF, the TIFF, and the PNG. Anyone is that 
you can always always use that um so we got to hear that the card visuals are some of your your favorites and that is cool i love that and we are going to see um the card visuals later on but i love that i love that we like we love the card the card visuals so now when selecting a good um visuals when selecting report visuals how, how do we go how do we go by them and we're going to go now um into that discussion um leon over to you excellent thank you very much there david and just to echo your sentiments i don't think that i've actually put together a power bi report in my time that hasn't had some form of button um, included in it so again those elements are fantastic to be used um, so in terms of selecting report visualizations so the primary goal of data visualization really for me um, is to communicate information clearly and effectively to report consumers this is why we start by selecting uh, the most effective visual type uh, to meet requirements. And this is a very critical part of visualizing any data. I like to use what I call at a glance um, reporting, whereby the individual who's consuming the report can look very briefly, maybe one or two seconds and get the answers that they need at a high level before being able to, to drill down. So let's take a look at some do's and don'ts um, in terms of visualization. If we can go into categorical Visual, visuals. So as I mentioned uh, before, often bar or column charts are really good choices when you need to show data across mot multiple categories. Um, selecting which really depends on the number of categories and the kind of information that we want to visualize. What we can see in this example is that we're actually using um, a line chart to display categorical information, um, whereby again, we should be using a bar chart here. For me, for me at least, David, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So we are going to see where um, a line graph or a line chart is being used, but majorly for categorical visuals, you're using a bar chart, you're using, yeah, or sometimes some people use the column chart, um, but majorly those two are good for anything categorical visuals. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, we really need to identify the correct type of visualization that we want to choose for the data that we're actually um, displaying there. Um, and a quick note to mention here is that you should sort your um, data by category as well when using these type of visualizations. And this can establish um, a nice sequence. Um, this could be such as the steps. Um, in a process that should be should, that should be displayed in that order. So, for example, ranking your sales um, from um, descending to ascending, so on and so yeah. forth. Um, these are really great tips in terms of being able to visualize your data. Um, David, should we take a look at time series visualization? Okay, great. So now, one thing about um, reports is that you need to get the best visual anytime that you're doing time. The quarter, the year, the month, day, um, hours, week, half year. It's just good um, for you to use the line or column chart to show values over over time. And this and now it also depends on where you are. Um, if your report goes from left to right or right right to left, so you can always check can always check that but the major thing is that whenever you're using line graph or whenever you're doing time series you always always use the line or column chart it's just easy for you to interpret and because there's so many data points when you're doing this sort of things there's so many data points and one of the beautiful things i like about the line chart is that you can also even check why there's a peak at a particular period of time or why there's a decrease at a particular period of time. And that is one of the cool things about the line graph within the Power BI setup. And what do you think, Leon? Um, I couldn't agree more. So in terms of identifying trends, um, line line charts are so powerful for this. Um, I see a lot of line charts being used in finance particularly um, and from a sales perspective as well. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I agree. So what do you think, our audience that you're listening to us, what do you think about line chart and periodic period and periodic time um, series for you to be able to explain the right visuals or the right data set? What do you think? Um, right now, we're going to be moving to proportional visuals. And Leon, over to you. 
uh, one of my favorite um, types of visualization because this sparks a very big debate um, in generally in data communities in terms of um, proportional visualizations um, because I often see um, either pie charts or donut charts being used for this type of visualization um, and it would be great to hear everybody's thoughts on this um, again within the chat do you use pie charts? Do you use donut charts? Um, if so, um, why and when do you? Um, and David, I'll pass this over to you in a moment. Let me just give some context in terms of proportional visualizations um, within Power BI first and foremost. So proportional visuals um, effectively show um, data as part of a whole. Uh, we can use these to communicate how a value can be distributed across a dimension as well. Um, and as we said before, column and bar chart visuals really work well um, for, for visualizing proportions across multiple dimensions. Um, you'll see in this example that we have a 100% stacked bar chart visualization, which is showing proportional sales across four um, store locations. Uh, it easily allows us to compare each store across six product categories uh, and you'll, you'll actually notice that this actual sales value isn't even shown instead the proportional amount of sales being shown allows reporting consumers to determine which one is higher so this is what i mean with this at a glance reporting whereby we can see it we can understand it visually and then if we need more information we can start to drill down on that as well it's worthwhile noting um, that some of the proportional visualizations available to us in power bi are the 100 percent stacked column chart as seen here here, the funnel chart, the tree map, um, and as we mentioned, that infamous pie chart and donut chart as well. Um, so David, I'll hand over to you. Please share your thoughts on both pie and donut charts. <laughs> okay. So for me, I try as much as possible to run away from those two charts. Um, the, the only time I pick those charts is when, so maybe the category, the categories of those numbers are so visible to see. So whenever I have something like 30, 30%, 30, 33% and uh, another 30 something percent, 30, 37%, which makes it 100%, but they're close. So if we on the data labels, it's still fine. You're still able to know the highest, but it's somewhat trickish. So one rule about visualization that I understand is that immediately we can see it, we should be able to interpret it. We should be able to interpret it. So we're going to now go, I want to hear the audience, what do you think about that? So why we move over to the numeric visuals? Now, a lot of us said that we love the card. And why? It's because of the type of audience that we represent or that we present to. A lot of time, maybe we are presenting finance data or we are presenting to the executive audience, they love numbers. So what is the numbers? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Comparing it to what? Actual versus budget, all those things. You just want to show that, okay, there is an immediate or high level call out that demands immediate attention. And that is something that a whole lot of us try to use. So we we'll see our revenue, we we'll sell our expense, we we'll sell our profits, we try as much as possible to put them into card so that it's easy for us to know how much is coming in, how much is going out at the bottom line at the end of the day. So what do you think, Leon, about numeric visuals? Oh, I think that they're fantastically represented uh, within Power, Power BI. Um, it's really easy, like you say, to display the information uh, directly on a card. I can agree and see why it's everybody's favorite visualization. Um, and also you can add elements as well to those type of visualizations by introducing um, conditional formatting and maybe the use of color as well. Yeah, great. So let's move over to grid. Wow, a lot of people said they like pie charts. That is cool. That is cool. So yeah, a lot of, and one thing is that pie chart started within Excel. So a lot of people love that pie chart. Then it comes over to Power BI and everybody still uses pie charts. Um, but one thing is that we should try as possible to make sure that our visual is telling the story that we want it to tell. So if pie chart can do that, it's good, but try as possible to be sure that it's telling the story that you want it to tell. So we're going to move over to grid visuals and over to you, Leon. Excellent. Thank you very much, David. And it's great to see that we've actually got some what we would call grid visualizations represented very well in terms of this demo. You'll see that they're nice and sleek um, in terms of their layout and aesthetically pleasing to the eye as well. 
I think this is often overlooked when people use um, both, ta both tables and matrices uh, because it can be effective, as we can see here, uh, to convey a lot of detailed information. So tables um, have a fixed number of columns and each column can express grouped or summarized data as well. You'll notice that we can now implement visual indicators. Um, so you'll see here that we have the red um, exclamation marks and the gray ticks as well in some of these visualizations. So it's not just representing Presenting that traditional Excel tabular data that we can see when we're inputting it directly into worksheets. We're actually getting a lot of information um, within the, these visuals as laid out here. You'll notice that with matrices, we can also start to drill down and introduce hierarchical uh, navigation as well. Um, so we can start to discover detailed points of interest as well. And we have a high amount of flexibility within by using the formatting options which are available to us. Some key points that I'd like to point out on um, both of these visualizations that we can see here is that there's no scrolling taking place. So there's no horizontal or vertical scrolling taking place either. And that for me, um, when visualizing tables uh, within Power BI um, is, is, is very much a no-no. We don't want to have reams and reams and scrolling left and right. We really want to be able to see our information, as I say, at a glance. Um, so David, have you had the opportunity to use tables uh, matrices within Power BI and how do you use them? Yeah, so a lot of time, most of the things I work with sometimes just need just only table and and it's so easy for you to be able to to see it because one thing about tables is that it gives you your report so easily and you are able to just understand the report most of the time when you want to be able to compare previous year from the current year it's just easy for you to pull in in the table and to be able to understand understand it or you want to see the change or the change um, in revenue month by month or year by year, just put it in table and you'll be able to just get it done. And that is one beautiful thing about tables that like, it's just easy for you to interpret and even to compare as fast as possible. Excellent, agreed. And shall we move on to performance visuals? Yeah, okay. So one thing about um, performance visuals is that you're trying to compare. Um, communicating performance involved describing a value and its comparison to a target. Any difference between the value and the target is its variance. So it's either it's going up or it's coming down. It's favorable or it's unfavorable. Sometimes a lot of us use colors or icons to convey that information. For example, when the variance is unfavorable, you want to display a red color or an exclamation mark. And if it is positive, you want to display a green color or a blue color, depending on. So if you look at the example on your screen right now, you're going to see a KPI visual that shows the numbers of items sold. It also adds context by showing how the value compares to target. You can now see a Contoso sales with $52.370 and but the target is actually fifty thousand dollars and it has raised up by 4.74 percent and now you can see the blue color so that is one beautiful thing about performance visuals and what are the type of visuals that you can use for performance visual you're using the gauge you're using kpi you're using tables like we explained earlier on you're using tables with conditional formatting or you're using matrix with conditional formatting um, Leon, which one have you used when, when running performance visuals? Any experience? Definitely. Definitely. So we've used um, cards as well. So the KPI indicators that are built into to cards. And also, as we mentioned, as well as you mentioned there, David, the gauge um, as well can be can be quite a clear indicator. Um, a lot of organizations that I find, especially again for financial sales based reporting, really want to see that indicator maybe across regions in a, in a, in a matrix as well. So I think that the great thing about Power BI is it gives us options. Um, in terms of how we want to display uh, performance information. How about yourself? I, ag I agree. I agree. For me also, it's actually the table. So for table, you're able to see a whole lot of data and you can be able to use your conditional formatting to be able to understand the different month. Let's assume that you're looking at the month on month, month change, January to December within, let's say, 2022. And you're able to know that, oh, it's going up, it's coming down. It's going up, it's coming down. Oh, it's going up 
and it's not coming down. Something like that. Are you able to see over time the performance of either your work or either your employee or anybody that you're working um, you're working with? Um, so let's go over to Joe's special um, visual, Leon. Excellent. So one of my favorite areas, so where a data set has geospatial information available to us, it can be conveyed by using map visuals. Now, everybody loves a map. And did you know, this is a question as well to the audience as well. Um, did you know that Power BI actually includes several core map visualizations? Um, and each visual really offers um, various formatting options that we can see um, in some of the visuals presented on the screen today. And that when they're actually applied appropriately, uh, it can really help to highlight geospatial data. So in the following examples you can see on the screen, uh, sales by city are being displayed by using a map visual and a field map visual within Power BI. Within this instance, the granularity of the data is at the city level and the perspective is the entire United States, okay? So with that being said, because there is a high dispersion um, between the plot points, uh, the map visual, which is displaying a bubble for each city, uh, produces a helpful, um, helpful result, but the field map visual actually of the United States, it can't sufficiently convey the actual city sales. Um, so if we were to raise the granularity in this example uh, to the state level, we would see that the field map, as we can see in this example here, actually produces a better result than the map visual. So what I would say is that when you are um, using geospatial data within Power BI, there's some, fast, there's some fantastic visualizations that are available out of the box. And there's also um, some notable custom uh, map visualizations as well that offer a different amount of flexibility. Um, as I mentioned, David, I absolutely love working with geospatial data uh, within Power BI, it can be so powerful to organizations to really get a glance, um, maybe globally, maybe by region of how their data is performing. And again, they can do this over time as well. So what are some of your thoughts um, on using geospatial data within Power BI? Very, very, very cool because most of the time you want to be able to see the different locations and what and how they are faring based on the business use case that you are trying to do. So whenever I'm working with countries, I just go on with my Azure map and I just try to start analyzing the reports or the data set from there. And it's very, very beautiful. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, and what should we go on to uh, looking at how we can select um, report visuals to suit the report layout as well? Yeah. So a few more designing aspects now. Yeah. But before we go there, we, we have a question. So let me ask you this question. So from one of um, our viewers, users, users want to export data. This is the main use case for tables. I agree with you to try to give users easy dashboard to view, but we will never get rid of the need to export. Anyone have other solutions for this? What do you think about that? Yeah, so for me, as I mentioned, um, in my scenario, I try to give the high level of detail uh, and then enable them to drill down. So we, we start we start to look at an aerial view of the data, uh, maybe go down a little bit in that hierarchy. And when they want that supreme level of detail, um, then again, we'll go we'll use a drill through functionality within Power BI for that. Um, it's 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 common um, across organizations, um, especially those that come from an Excel background to want to see uh, reams and reams of data in a table. And I think that that should be available to them, um, but maybe only to super users uh, and also really to those users that want to see that level of detail. And this really comes down to engaging with your stakeholders within the organization to see how they use data and why they consume data. Um, I always I always hark back to some of my time spent um, speaking with, with stakeholders and asking the, the five whys, um, asking them why they do that calculation uh, within within Excel or, or another tool, asking them what number they're really looking to get to and why they want that number. Generally, what we tend to f understand is that end users want a lot of tabular data to get to a final number. So why don't we just present that number to them or that analysis to them directly in Power BI? Um, and then there's no need for that detail level for all users. Uh, this has been some of my experiences in deal dealing with this, um, but I wouldn't say that it's cut and shut for every single scenario out there. Um, David, how would you answer that question? Yeah, for me, one thing is that which I agree with you is part of the Excel usage of a whole lot of people or executive. And one thing there is that because of the power of Jutro, 
you should be able to have a place where you have a whole lot of tables but the major reports that you really want to show the major dashboard that you want to show the major story that you want to tell those are the first things that you are going to show your audience and depending on your audience majorly executive audience needs different type of visuals and non-executive audience needs another type of visuals so depending on your audience you can actually determine if you need tables or if you really don't need tables and sometimes some people just love tables because they're familiar with it so when you begin to teach them how to understand the different report um, visuals they might start getting used to the new um, visuals that we have within power bi that is what that is, those are my thoughts excellent fantastic okay so let's talk about selecting report visuals to suit your reports um layouts now one cool thing um is that most of the time you want to be able to choose between multiple visuals type to meet design requirements and to narrow down this selection you can actually best choose the visuals that best fit the available space that you're working with use a visuals that is pleasing while maximizing the use of available page space the following example shows two visuals side by side 100% a 100% stack bar chart visual and another 100% stack column chart visuals each visual shows the same data and occupy the same space on the page but one visual is easier to reach in this instance the 100% bar chart actually helps you to make easier for you to determine relative values and and trend so the i thing that you're trying to look at is to be able to see how you interpret data within the, the within the same space or the same available space you can look the first example and the second example and you can see how you were able to change the visuals but still tell the same story that we want it to tell so depending on the space that you have if you have a more horizontal space try to go into the horizontal type of chart if you have a more vertical try to go into the other side um, of the chat. What do you think, Leon? Oh, I totally agree. It's, it, it always amazes me um, when I see reports and just the smallest tweak um, that makes it so much more accessible um, to the audience that it's actually displayed to. As you can see in these in these examples on the page here, uh, literally just by tilting um, the angle um, or, or the way it's displayed, we are able to start to interpret um, these reports in, in in a so much more clear way uh, and a lot quicker as well. Uh, it's much more efficient um, and pleasing on the eye. Now, one thing we haven't discussed, David, which I'm keen to to bring to the floor at the moment, uh, would be color as well. Um, color can be very subjective um, when when doing data visualizations, uh, and also there's the access accessibility option in terms of people that are color blind as well. So I'd be keen to hear on how you deal with and interpret with color um, in some of your report visualizations as well. Okay, so one bit one thing for me is to be careful. Dona Saka is my friend, so I have to I have to be very very sure of my colors. So one thing is that. Um, for me, I try not to use red. I try not to use green. So I try to go into the little, little side, the other side of some colors. For me now, if I'm doing positive, I try to go through with the blue side, with the blue color. So for me, the blue color, just everybody is able to understand um, the blue color. So I try as much as possible to follow rules. And sometimes because of um, company's logo color or brand color, I try to run away from brand colors because sometimes it goes against even the rule of accessibility. So, but one thing that is so important is that as we build the report, we begin to understand why some colors are important than some other um, colors. What do you think, Leon? Um, I couldn't agree more. And there's been some scenarios where we've been working with organizations and very similar to what you laid out there. Uh, we haven't used green and red to represent positive and negative. We've actually used, as you mentioned, maybe blue and I don't know, for example, purple, for lack of a better example. And yeah. this is due to accessibility 
um, within an organization and making sure again that the consumers um, can actually read the report um, and it's clear for them so um, I, like I mentioned colors are always subjective and I always say that if we're at the stage where we're discussing which colors to use um, then we've done a fantastic job uh, because we just need to make sure it's the right colors at that point everything else is in line and, and the data is validated and we're moving forward so so yeah that's 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 my thoughts on colors okay Great. So now let's move over to explore visual selection um, and and design. Um, so before now we'll be going over to Leon's computer to show us some things on how we pick some. Uh, let's explore some visual selection and some design. Um, over to you, Leon. Excellent. Yes. So what we're going to do in this session um, is take a look uh, one by one, some different types of visualizations um, and what what the element of good should look like and what bad would look like as well in, in, in using some of these different types of visuals, um, as we can see here. So let's go first and take a look at categorical line charts. OK, um, so as we can see in th this section here, categorical line charts uh, should imply that the points on the X axis form an ordered sequence. If the X axis is categorical, so it represents groups rather than a continuous value like time, there's usually no logical sequence. And this is what we saw in the example earlier. So in this case, line charts should be avoided, as we can see in this example here. Rather than using a line chart, we can use one of my favorite charts that we mentioned earlier, a bar chart to convey the information in a way that allows for easy comparison with other data points. So let's toggle across and see what this looks like in this example. OK, and as I mentioned, you'll notice that by going from one to the other, we can start to see very clearly in good practice the sales by product. OK, um, David, would you like to go into um, time on the Y axis? OK, sure. Excellent. So now, like we said earlier on, time series is so important when doing reports. But one thing is that you have to be able to pick your best visuals. So it's just important to pick a visual that is easy to consume and feel natural to the report consumer. When there's a time element to your data and or like a time series of dates, placing it on the Y is just counterintuitive. And report consumer expect to see time series that read from left to right, also depending on where you're working. Sometimes it might be some right. To left. Also, um, report consumer, we need vertical scrolling to see the entire um, time series. So, by visualizing time series, you are also tap into the report consumer expectation. So, right now, you can see the bad practice that we have, and we are seeing just the bar chart going. But you can see the numbers, yes, but it doesn't show what we expect it to show in a more pleasing way. And um, so if we toggle over it from the bad to the good practice, now we can now see sales over time. And it's so easy for us to be able to even interpret that by March 14, we have $7.2 million and goes down also um, within May 22, uh, March 22 to 2.4 and goes up, goes down, go up, go down and be able to pick the data and say, okay, why does it pick at this point in time? And it's just so easy to, to do that over a very long um period of time yeah i, I think i like um, the line chart it's just beautiful to see the line chart it's really one of the things within power bi is to be able to also predict the next days how we are going to see that sales over time again what do you think Leon? Excellent. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. This is a really good example as well, where you can see clear trends within the data uh, and line line charts over over time uh, for time series data are fantastic for this. Um, shall we go back up? Do we have time to have a look at a couple more or shall we move on? OK, we can look at sorting by category, then we, we move on. Excellent. Fantastic. So let's take a look at sorting by category. OK, once again, the old faithful um, bar charts as such uh, and bar charts are very good at conveying categorical data points, as we've touched on multiple times over today's session. However, when data points are sorted alphabetically, it can make it difficult to compare or rank. OK, so to help consumers compare and rank data, uh, data points, sorry, we need to sort them in an appropriate and intuitive way. So let's first of all go back to um, 
to our bad practice, as we can see on our toggle here, uh, which again refers to unsorted data. Um, we can see that we have a peak here with PowerPoint, uh, but again, there's no logical order um, to the data being shown here. Now, by toggling across, as we saw initially, we can now see again, very pleasing. And again, I can't repeat this enough, um, very easy and efficiently at a glance, you can start to see that PowerPoint is by clear the best selling product uh, within within this demonstration here. And again, by using gradient um, coloring as well, we can start to negate um, those that don't really make up um, um, the, the, the information we want to see at a glance here as well by using um, conditional color bars um, or columns that can be applied, like we say, to accentuate that message. Okay. Yeah, I love the I love the colors. I love the way you move from deep so light it's just so easy for you to be able to interpret this because that is something that that is a very very good practice um to do excellent fantastic so shall we move on should we go back to your screen david for the next section yes so let's let's come back to my screen um so now we want to test your knowledge as we get yes. closer to the end um, of this um learn life session so let's test um, the knowledge that you've learned over the next and um, the last 45 minutes. Um, so now let's look at this question. Uh, to Leon? Yeah, of course. So um, with this question, and again, we want this to be very interactive of the information we've just been through. So please do participate. Um, so at the Contonso Skateboard Company, Brandon is designing a dashboard report to show inventory stock levels over time. So what type of report visual should Brandon choose to effectively show the stock levels? And you can vote by using the QR code here um, or also at the vote um, URL that's at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, so you just vote and let's see what you picked and we're going to know, just pick. Let's see what it is. So, um, Leon, what do you think um, when we're looking at um, stock over a period of time? Um, what type of charts are we thinking um, to use? Because, um, yeah, I, I, I just want to wait for um, the viewers to give us some of their thoughts. And from there, we'll be able to. But what, what do you think about the question? Yeah, of course. So I think that it's really, really key, uh, clear and key to see here is that we're looking at time series data. OK, um, we have a pie chart here, um, which, again, uh, not knocking pie charts, as I know they have a big <laughs> fan base. Um, but we can see that the votes are coming in. Um, and because it's time series data, we would be using um, a line chart for this scenario. Yeah. Do you agree with that, David? Yes, yes, yes. Eighty-five percent got it correct. That is cool. Thank you, thank you very much. Fantastic. So let's go over to um question two. Yes. Now, at the Contoso Stick Board Company, Sakura is designing an analytic tool. It must include the visuals that allow report consumer to explore and discover detailed sales value over time and by store. What type? of report visual should Sakura choose to support the report consumer requirement? Um, so you can actually click on the use your QR code to pick and to be able to pick the answer or use the link. And we want to see um, what you think about that. So start voting. Um, Leon, what do you think? This is going to be a tricky one, I think. Um, I agree. So I, I, it will be interesting to see um, the results from, from this one. Um, I have an inclination. We, we spoke briefly um, throughout the session in terms of how we can use different types of visuals to show a lot of information um, and a lot, of, a lot of metrics within a single visual. Um, what are your thoughts, David, on this one? A little bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. So let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's see. Um, a whole lot of people have been split between A and B. Um, yeah. So what... The answer is matrix. So you're trying to see. Um, so this is more than one or two um, categories of visuals. And over time, and you want to look at matrix visual. And um, what do you think, Leon? Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. The matrix visual really opens up a lot, a, a lot of power and options within Power BI um, for this type of data. So I think the matrix is a, is is a good example of this table technically. It could fit the requirement as well, yeah. but, but the matrix yeah. just enhances that functionality a little bit more. So ex excellent interaction and good guesses, everybody. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that was cool. Um, so for question three. Excellent. So question three, um, again, please do get ready to vote. So at Contoso um, skateboard company, James is designing a dashboard report. It must prominently show values of sales revenue, units sold, cost of goods sold and profit. And each value should be compared to a target value. What type of report visuals did James choose to support the report consumer requirement? David, what are your thoughts on this one? So for everybody, we spoke about something called performative visuals. So what do you think about performative visuals? So th that gives you a guess of the answer um, that we're talking about. So the whole idea is that how do we compare actual to budget? What type of visuals help us to do that? And so, so that is my thought about, about this question. So because you're doing more of comparison, yeah. So your answer is there. Okay. So Leon, what are people saying? Uh, so it looks like um, by far B is the highest choice, but A is very close in second place as well. Um, so again, really, really good answers to this one. Uh, David, what would your thoughts be on, on that answer? Yeah, KP high. Uh, that is B um, is the highest choice. Yeah. Yes. So for people who picked um, B, yeah, so that is correct. So can CAD do that? But I think that there's another type of card that can do that. Um, so, but really KPI majorly helps you to be able to compare to a target um, value. And thank you, thank you very much everybody um, for, for, for voting. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay. Should we take a look so, at the learning objectives for today and summarize? Yeah, and the summary. So let's do the summary. Um, so one thing that we've been able to understand is the structure of Power BI, you're looking at both the visuals and you're looking at the, the element and you're coming to also the objects, you're, you're looking at um, the, the bookmarks, the images and the different other things that you want to use to support um, your report. And also we've looked at different type of visuals to use depending on the situation or on the type of insights that you're trying to gain to we're trying to gain and create for your consumers. Um, okay, over to you, um, Leon. Excellent. So for those individuals that would love to continue learning more about Power BI and how you can design effective Power BI reports, you could head, head on over to Learn Live. Um, the links and the QR code are available on screen now uh, to complete interactive um, learning exercises, watch the videos and practice and apply your new skills. Now, we would love for you to reach out to us um, via social media, um, either LinkedIn or Twitter and share your report designs and your feedback. Uh, with us as well. It's been absolutely amazing to be able to go through in a bit more detail um, today's Learn Live and also take a look, David, at good and bad practice within data visualization. Um, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today has been amazing. I learned a little lot also yes. um, from understanding the Power BI reports, picking the best visuals depending on what you are trying to, you are trying to portray within your Power BI report. So please, you can learn more um, using this, the module to learn more. Um, thank you. Um, thank you very much. So one beautiful thing about Microsoft Ignite um, is that we have the Microsoft Learn Skill um, Challenge. Um, and you can earn free certification exams if you finish your unique collections before November 9th. So you can also build your skills more on the Microsoft Learn, and that is one of the cool things um, about Microsoft that I love. Um, also, you can go deep, dive deeper yes. um, into the collections, and you learn life also, actually. Um, and I want you guys uh, to, um, if you want to, if you want to ask any question, uh, we still have like three, four minutes more. You can ask your questions. We'll be able to answer them. Hopefully, um, there is um, there is time. Um, so thank you very much, every everybody. Um, Leon, what do you think? Yeah, like I say, thank you very much um, for having me here with you today, David. Let's do take the time um, that we've got left to open up for any questions. If anybody has um, any any questions specifically on data visualization, um, report visuals, um, or generally on, on, on anything else. So, um, David, why wait for a few questions to come in? 
I will just mention that for myself as a Microsoft MVP, um, it's been fantastic to be a part of the Ignite 2022 experience. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a pleasure for you to have me, um, to invite me here to be with you as well. Um, and to our moderators as well that I know have been working hard uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Adewale Yusuf, to Olari Rajo in Boke. Thank you very much for moderating these sessions. To all our producers in the studio, thank you, thank you very much um, for helping at the back. Um, thank you very much, everybody. You can reach out on our social media, Andrews, David Abu, and Leon Gordon. Thank you, thank you. Um, I don't think there are questions coming in, um, but if there are no questions coming in, thank you very much, everybody. Bye, over from Lagos. Excellent, thank you very much. It doesn't look like, again, at the moment we have any questions coming through um so please do like i say if you if you would like to ask any questions now is the time um david just while we do have a minute or two left um i will pose a pose a question if that's okay um, yeah but based on some of the information um, that we saw earlier we started to take a brief look at custom visualizations now my question is going to be quite a broad one um how do you feel that their places um within within power vi do you use them quite a lot um have you implemented them with any with any customers um generally what are your thoughts on on custom visualizations within power vi so the major thing is that we have a whole lot of custom visualizations and for funny how one of the ones i like is the scroller but the scroller visual um the scroller visual is it's just simple because um it just tells the story in just the same way people watch tv um and you're watching and every numbers the numbers are going in and you're seeing and you're understanding the different stories that those numbers tell. Um, so for a whole lot of customers, sometimes um, they, they tend to just prefer bar charts. So they don't want to go into the custom visuals. Um, so they just go into the bar chart and they are fine with it. They are fine with it. Except we start teaching them how to start using the new um, tools um, or the new visuals um, within the custom um, visualization tool. So yeah. Those are the things I, I've worked with. I think we have a question. What about restrict part of the report to special rules entered in Active um, Directory? What do you have to say, Leon? Yeah, so from this perspective, um, generally the first the first um, thoughts that come to mind are, are row level security and object level security. Um, I think that by using those, you can re at least restrict the measures from that perspective. Um, I think some work is potentially still being done under the hood to be able to either restrict report pages or parts of reports um, to individual users. So what I would say on that is watch this space more than likely. Uh, what are yeah. your thoughts there, David? Yeah, same thing. Something I agree with you because of time. I'm trying to see. I think we still have two more questions. Hopefully, we can Excellent. pick that up. Um, but they said, um, is there a resource for transforming data that you feel is most informative? And so, um, you decide on the type of data that is more informative than others, and also you have your stake stakeholders to be able to to be able to do that um, for you to tell you which one is more. Um, but you transforming for me, so it depends if I get your your um, questions correctly. Um, either you're talking about the Power Query angle of transforming data set because you're looking at which one is so important for you to report on or talk on or if you're looking at the visualization side then it means that before going into power bi you're supposed to have the list of different type of data that or the different type of insights that your people or your customers your stakeholders your consumers are looking for when you have that that gives you more information on how to actually build dashboard that answers to those um, questions um leon what do you think yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. I know that we're running low on time at the moment, so I think yeah. you summarised that fantastically there, David. So nothing nothing else to add from that from my perspective. Okay, we just have like thirty seconds to go. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, this is David Abu from Lagos, Nigeria. Excellent, and I've been Leon Gordon from London, UK. Um, been brought to you here uh, in association with Pomerol Partners as well, and it's been fantastic to be at Microsoft Ignite 2022. Enjoy the rest of the show, and uh, more more importantly, stay safe as well. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye.